all right so in today's lecture we will start of course we are trying to understand liberalism number one uh, both as a political philosophy number one and number two as a principle underlying the formation and the progress of indian state in the independent period all right so these are two things that we will be focusing and but if you focused on the reading by sunil khilnani that is of course idea of india uh, and the title of the book itself suggests what uh, he shall be discussing as he moves uh, forward idea of india uh, if you focus on these words you will find that he is discussing uh, 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 the response to a question hypothetical question for example what is india what it is to be an indian no how are indians like the well read book the idea of india refers to uh, certain fundamental attributes of our society which in turn get reflected in the state so sunil khilnani right from the start is highlighting uh, the problem uh, in today's lecture we will be focusing on the problems of hindutva politics uh, vis a vis uh, uh, problems of uh, hindutva politics vis a vis our liberal uh, and secular uh, uh, constitution uh, so what what threat or problem does it pose in the traditional and nowadays you find a lot of lectures uh, everywhere and uh, what is uh, the problem with all of uh, those mainstream lectures is not to actually highlight on the problem of course we study liberalism and we learn a lot from it but as i told you earlier right from the beginning when you try to understand something you look at the definition that is one part of it but to highlight the problem one by one numbered list of the problems that is what makes you really really intelligent so for example when you look at the hindutva politics what are the problems posed by it and are they real problems or uh, we just uh, uh, think so or uh, uh, a capricious westerner might be thinking like that or a centrist so the word center also came in the reading if you focused i told you that the word center or liberal will come so the political spectrum uh, that is left right and center center when we discuss liberalism we are discussing the center so the problems coming back again to the problems posed to liberal conception of politics by hindutva uh, groups is uh, something that we need to understand and the problems started not today they started very early uh, uh, during our colonial struggle for example when britishers for example if we go back to of course problems i'll be coming back but if you go to the liberal period uh, raja ram mohan roy was working uh, uh, during that period 1810s 20s and 30s died i think in 1833 raja ram mohan roy in uh, uh, in uh, london went uh, to submit uh, a request uh, on behalf of the mughal ruler so the raja ram mohan roy was influenced by utilitarian principle of uh, uh, jeremy bentham at that time working no james mill and he thought that the highest principles the highest principle of law and morals is to maximize uh, the happiness for the maximum number of people that was broadly a rational framework of looking at things no we will do only those things which will ensure that uh, our action is in uh, uh, in uh, uh, is helpful for most of the people not just one or two but most of the people so this uh, and he also for example if you look at his works uh, uh, translated person and so on and start, uh, was a firm believer in reason argued for abolition of sati and so on but when britishers the problem begins here when the britishers started acting in the domain of the personal law or the cultural right or the group right of the indians uh, there was a conservative uh, landed elite his entry which vehemently opposed this and they said that you do not have the right to interfere in my culture no so that is the point of genesis uh, of the problem that reactionary force no british uh, domination and the reaction conservative reaction to it so if you look at it uh, who was the inheritor of raja ram mohan roy after he died in 1833 it was kesub chandra sen all right 
you will read about him and then uh, Iswar Chand Vidya Sagar and then Dayanan Saraswati, Swami Vivekananda, no? And then uh, Bal Ganga Dhartilak, Lala Lajpatrai and uh, other than that, Muhammad Ali Jinnah is communal, communal uh, branch of thinking about politics. Muhammad Ali Jinnah and then you see, uh, for example, uh, uh, other leaders coming up uh, on the political scene of India, along with uh, so uh, Sama Prasad Mukherjee, for example, because the word Kashmir is very prominent. In yesterday's lecture, I told you that uh, uh, the caste, creed, language, religion, and the ethnicity, all right, these are unavoidable in Indian politics, and you better get a grip of it. Tomorrow, uh, or day after tomorrow, we'll be coming back to it, and we'll be discussing it. What, what what uh, consequences it has. So the problems I was highlighting and uh, our job is to understand Indian government and politics, not in the pre-colonial time, but after the post-colonial time, right? So 75 years of history. So if you look at uh, immediately when our constitution uh, was being drafted, we started drafting our constitution first meeting 6th December uh, 1946, if I'm correct. Right, and the first Constituent Assembly meeting on 11th of December uh, 1946, wherein the objectives resolution was discussed. That was a very precarious time. We all know that uh, uh, the partition happened. The proposal for the partition was going on, although the partition happened on 3rd of June uh, 1947, uh, the, uh, the, the, the date. Uh, and the announcement was made on 19th of July, uh, 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 1940, uh, 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 June, uh, earlier than the July, and uh, uh, third, you could just check it out, okay? I'm just a little bit confused, but find the precise date, okay? The precise date and time is what uh, you need to understand. So the problems of Hindutva politics started emerging right then. We all know about the assassination of uh, uh, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, thought to be uh, the most uh, powerful leader in the post-colonial world uh, in developing a moral agency among the people and mobilizing people to fight for their rights. Uh, he was the one who came from South Africa in 1915 to India and for two years he did not go anywhere and he said that what I am going to do, I'm going to sit in a train and to, to ferry uh, the country and to know what country is like. And then he started his Champanan Satyagraha in 1917. No? And, uh, this guy, so the problem, number one, to understand with respect to Hindutva politics, why did uh, a Hindutva affiliate uh, killed Mahatma Gandhi? All right, this is the problem, number one. Why was he killed by Nathuram Godse, uh, who was affiliated to B.D. Savarkar, M.S. Gulwalkar, and also the parent organization, Rashtriya Swayam Sevaksan, RSS. All right, so the problem starts here only. And if you remember, you know what happened? Although uh, we have been eologizing and, and, and praising Jawaharlal Nehru, and rightly so, but uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's job was not easy to do when he started uh, the job of premiership for the first time. Uh, he had to strike a balance between the, uh, between the communists, number one, all right, and uh, other than that, the capitalists, opposing forces, both of them, all right. And uh, with that, uh, uh, he had to contend with the growing voice of Hindu nationalism uh, because of the partisan. Uh, when uh, the trains, for example, in the cultural memory of South Asia, the carnage that happened because of the partisan of India and Pakistan is well remembered. There is a movie, uh, if you, uh, uh, I'm, if I'm, uh, by, the, the story is written by this uh, famous, uh, uh, English writer uh, uh, Amrita Pritam uh, and the movie, I think, I'm, I'm not exactly remembering the movie, Pinger, the movie, okay? If you read this movie, because, see, I'm highlighting liberalism and liberalism at the fundamental refers to the toleration only, the principle of toleration. For example, Pakistan became Islamic state, no? Other states became Islamic state. But India chose not to do so. No state religion, a secular democratic polity, Republican polity. All right. So we consciously did that. But uh, if it is proper or not to take the Hindutva politics at task 
with respect to the cherished goal of our constitution to give every individual in the body politic equal dignity, equal respect, and equality of opportunity, as well as ensuring that they are treated equally uh, before the law, isn't it? So when you start uh, looking at the problematics of the Hindutva politics with uh, we, the progress that we have made uh, in our post-independent politics, we find that they have been actually uh, insisting upon giving a certain monolithic identity to Indian politics, such as to describe who we are in terms of either a language or religion or ethnicity or, or color or uh, an alliance and amalgamation of these identities working as an uh, exclusivist ideology, exclusive, that is, it excludes other people. Here, here exclusive is written in opposition to the term inclusive. Exclusive means we, I and them, we and they, in terms of uh, engaging in discourse in terms of othering, the other people, for example, no? So the venomous politics that is uh, 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 very much, uh, of course, you are subjected to the brutal uh, misinformation and disinformation of the social media, and you see everything, a lot of propaganda going on, and politics is a serious business, all right? Politics is not something that you just uh, read and forget. Whatever you read in the book, it reflects in the world. That is why political science is called the master science. Why master science? Because it has a lot to do with the day-to-day -day current affairs, day-to-day -day life of the common people. So two problems of Hindutva, number one, they are in opposition to the very secular principle underlying our polity. Number two, their assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. And number three, after the emergency and coming off uh, in power of Janta government for one year, uh, firm uh, solidification of Hindutva forces in Indian politics once and, and, and for all, uh, and then the, uh, the creation of Bharatiya Janta Party in 1983. And we all know that this party was created in 1983, uh, 1984, uh, Indira Gandhi was assassinated. And uh, after her assassination, uh, you know, you started the turmoil in Kashmir started with respect to the secession. Assam was burning at that time. Punjab was fighting uh, uh, for which Indira Gandhi was killed. No, so uh, this was, uh, now it is becoming apparent to you. Be aided by first of all the exclusivist, xenophobic, uh, othering ideology of RSS. Other secessionist forces uh, in the Indian subcontinent got emboldened. For example. They, uh, 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 they got integrated when we became free in the Indian Union, but when BJP started doing this exclusivist, uh, uh, you know, whatever the underlying belief or pattern of thought behind it, but our job is to critically understand it. And since then we see the fragmentation of our body politic in terms of the uh, introduction of religion, uh, very uh, sorry mixture of religion in politics, which actually, uh, 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 poisons the civil society, all right? You understand civil society, isn't it? Civil society is uh, 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 a space between the, between the state, all right? And uh, the society, common society. Civil society is a place wherein an educated citizen tries to understand the state, tries to bargain with the state and tries to, uh, you know, organize against the state if the state is oppressive. For example, we refer to civil society movements. Uh, when, for example, uh, 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 anybody, for example, Aruna Roy from your own college, uh, alumna of your college, campaigning for right to information, for example, civil society movements, that we citizens have the right to information and a state must provide us with the right, uh, with the right to requisite information so that when we vote, we have the proper information about what policies are being made for us and uh, how the money was spent and what you are going to do in the future, isn't it? So today our focus is only on the problem of Hindutva politics. Why? Because in the Sunil Khilnani's book, you will find that uh, this problem is recurring. And above all, let me state it clearly to you that, uh, you know, the, the emergence of liberal politics around the world, if you focus, to provide a global context, 
you will find that uh, even in Europe, we had uh, this fight between the Catholics and the Protestants, no? 30 years war, if you look at it, before the Treaty of Westphalia, which was intestinal religious wars, recurring religious wars, and fragmenting the whole of Europe. And then Treaty of Westphalia came in 1648, and he said that uh, every single country has uh, the right to self-determination, and every uh, single community has uh, the freedom to practice whatever religion they want and uh, to respect the sovereignty and integrity of each other, non-interference in other affairs. So when you look at it, it is not for the first time that we are observing uh, this uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, unholy uh, mixture of religion into politics. Uh, why I am highlighting it? Because our constitution states that we, the people of India, have solemnly resolved. What is solemnly resolved, by the way? Solemn, the word solemn refers to that we are serious about it. We are dead serious about it. No? It's not that we were forgetful and somehow in the fit of rage or forgetfulness, we wrote that uh, we are a secular polity. No. We took a solemn resolve. All right? The Indian people to constitute India into a sovereign, uh, secular, socialist, democratic republic. These words are only qualifiers of the word liberalism, if you look at them closely. Even liberalism, uh, students, if you focus, uh, liberalism, when it was subjected to brutal critique by the Marxist ideology uh, for its exploitative nature, and only referring to the, uh, the ornamental rights uh, system, for example, natural rights system uh, for brutally uh, 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 treating the workers, the children and the women, for example, in London back then, uh, between the 1830s and 1850s, a lot of riots and so on happening. Even then the T.H. Green came. Uh, T.H. Green, uh, you must remember, uh, once and for all, I insist, uh, because T.H. Green is credited with uh, uh, reforming the liberal ideology and uh, reforming it to suit with the welfare state provision that some of the services state can provide, for example, education, health, and uh, social infrastructure. So it became settled principles. So socialism somehow is embedded in liberalism. That is why if you read the book, Jawaharlal Nehru is saying that I am a secular uh, liberal, a liberal secular politician, but I believe in socialism because I have an understanding of history and I believe that socialism has actually transcended liberalism uh, as a social philosophy, as a political philosophy, as a more powerful explainer of some of the uh, things that we do in politics. Okay, so Hindutva politics, of course, uh, will always be uh, contextualized just like Marxism in reference to the liberal principles. And let me tell you without being biased or without being favorable to any ideology that liberalism is an instructive read about political history. To read the origin of the idea, you also get a grip of the, uh, the conservative no, element the, and then the progressive, more radical left element, which actually, if you look at Karl Marx himself, what he, he is criticizing Adam Smith only, isn't it? The writing about capital. He's trying to understand the capital. Uh, why Karl Marx becomes so effusive and so powerful in explaining what is happening in Europe and around the world is because he is able to describe what capitalism is and how it works and how, uh, when you are, as suggested earlier yesterday, I, I, I talked about the word sublimation. That is, when you understand something, you actually internalize it, you sublimate it. So when you have powerful causal explanation of how a particular thing A works, you of course lay it bare and then the counter and the critique can come, the requirement for the reform can come. So Hindutva politics uh, need to be understood, uh, needs to be understood in the, uh, with respect to our commitment, earlier commitment uh, to uh, a socialist, uh, liberal, secular, democratic polity and uh, uh, wherein we have the provision for equality of opportunity, quality before the law, and uh, every single individual uh, is to be treated equally before the, before the, before the law and, uh, 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 and so on. So uh, when Hindutva politicians uh, or the brigade or the whatever they run, 
when they start insi insisting on a particular exclusivist ideology of who we Indians are, then of course uh, uh, that particular ideology doesn't fit. Because if you look at the Wikipedia, we the Indians speak 1600 dialects. Do you know that? The immense diversity of language. We have 24 constitutionally recognized languages in Sedule. So when you are insisting on a particular uh, way of speaking, particular tongue, particular creed or religion or ethnicity, of course, you are trying to just uh, give a picture of India, which actually never existed. If you look at the antiquity of India, uh, is it proper to say that uh, India was not liberal? We know for sure that uh, uh, our known history starts from Indus Valley civilization, isn't it? Even before that, prehistoric times you go, we have all that, but known history refers to written history, okay? The Vedic period. And we all know that we had uh, Aryans here, and uh, then we had Persians here, chronologically, all right? And then we had Greeks here, we have Central Asians here, no? And then we have Jews here, and uh, after that, uh, 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 we have uh, Muslims, uh, and within our own country, we got we invented a few religions, for example, Buddhism, Jainism, and uh, of course, uh, different varieties, Vaishnavism, Saivism, and so on within Hinduism. So the word palimpsest, uh, palimpsest is a keyword. Uh, uh, today's task, you just go out and Google that word. Uh, see, I am very slow with you guys and very patient because my uh, commitment is with respect to the reading and not with respect to uh, how much I can indoctrinate you. My focus is only to, to somehow uh, uh, being able to induce you to go back to the reading and to, to understand the subject matter in the syllabus, no? So that uh, uh, whatever you seek to is. So the monolithic picture, what is monolithic by the way? because some of the students, they have been raising objects and with respect to the use of some difficult vocabulary in the class, which they sometimes do not understand. So monolithic Hindutva, uh, Hindutva politics visualizes or envisions a monolithic uh, view of Indian society. What does it mean, the statement? Monolithic, uh, of course, you will find it in the dictionary. Mono refers to single, all right? Lith means stone, all right? All right. So monolithic referring to uh, constructing an image of India in a single stone, monolithic. What is the opposite word of monolithic? Uh, uh, diverse, multicultural, polylithic, all right? So, so you have to be very careful. Uh, and of course, uh, highlighting the problem of Hindutva politics, how we, we see it's the liberal democratic project in our country is number one with, reflect, with, with, with reference to their monolithic view of India, number, number two, their exclusivist chauvinism, chauvinism with, reflect, with, with reference to other communities, uh, the condescension and the holier than thou approach to other communities, no? Uh, promoting unbridled Brahmanism, for example, and uh, 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 claiming that this ideology has been good and uh, shall remain good for the future to come, which is just a, a betrayal of the public conscience, public popular conscience, because that is not the case, isn't it? Uh, not very, uh, 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 so the status of, uh, uh, when we are referring to Indian politics, it is not for one person from one particular caste or religion or language or ethnicity or region, no? We are referring from Kanyakumari to Kashmir and from Kandla to Arunachal Pradesh, every single, person, every single community and uh, living in the Indian state. And when we speak, we have to be very, very sensitive. We have to be very uh, informed not to uh, misspell, not to misspeak, and not to misrepresent. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, so uh, shamelessly, uh, uh, the Hindutva Brigade goes on to demonize certain section of the population uh, at the uh, at the great, uh, you know, uh, uh, great, uh, uh, to great happiness of their uh, hubris, their, uh, their pride, false pride in some kind of ancient, far gone, never to be recovered, bygone, past, uh, 
somebody said that uh, uh, let the bygone be bygone let the golden period of the gupta age be the golden period and let whatever glory was in the past uh, belongs to the past and let me tell you if you read more closely and more sincerely you will find also the assertion that uh, uh, to claim to recover the past is a lunatic engagement you will never be able to uh, uh, reclaim the past uh, because it's gone the new uh, and the future no it is much more appealing than the dead and forgone past why because you know what the past was like because of the written text and so on but you have no idea what the future would be it might be completely new isn't it so always more appealing the future is always uh, uh, more appealing so in opposition to hindutva politics what you should be thinking about is new education all right all right uh, these are some inventive vocabularies that you will find in the radical revolutionary literature not here uh, new culture by the way all right that is futuristic uh, way of thinking about it new education new culture and for example when you read the feminist literature uh, women uh, you will find new women all right new is looking to you as some kind of uh, meaningless qualifier but it's a powerful qualifier okay new education policy for example they are claiming no what is new novel no so not the old education policy not the old culture not the old but the new because it has more potential and uh, highlighting coming back again to the problematic of hindutva politics and uh, the recent resurgence of uh, xenophobia all right the problem number 3 what is xenophobia dosto xeno here refers to foreign all right and phobia refers to fear all right uh, fear of the foreigner okay xenophobia and uh, uh, you remember we have been hearing this news and you guys are, you guys are now uh, very much uh, reading uh, things newspapers and so on following social media so uh, this problem with respect to our boundary in uh, in uh, the northeast uh, with bangladesh and the problem of uh, muslims living in for example assam tripura uh, nagaland manipur so uh, this uh, thing uh, started coming up national register, register of citizens uh, and uh, constitutional amendment act you know to describe who is a citizen and who is a, who is not so the news started coming up that uh, we are, uh, just like in the nazi germany uh, when the concentration camps were being built and people were being uh, pulled in the train to that particular place so that they can be emaciated and they can be killed summarily no summary summary execution the same thing going on in our country of course i am your professor and again to highlight my job is not to take a position but to lay bare the situation as it is uh, sometimes the seriousness we cannot acquire you know because of the sheer distance from the events happening no we can only reflect upon it but we can tell you but let me tell you as far as my understanding goes uh, i stand in firm opposition to any monolithic description of our country the culture and who we are and uh, uh, i do believe that uh, this particular kind of description this uh, uh, particular kind of interpretation of, of indian history is antithetical to our national integrity and unity and it shall uh, lead to a breaking up of the union that is uh, it is dangerous tendency the hindutva tendency actually is uh, uh, not uh, uh, not uh, uh, in in uh, 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 you, you you say in consonance with uh, our broader uh, emphasis earlier that india shall march on to the light liberty and and freedom isn't it for each and every individual india is not one individual from a very upper caste family privileged and uh, uh, you know condescending and believing that i have all the voice and everything and i can tell who you are no you cannot tell me who i am yesterday i was telling you about the problem of representation isn't it you choose a particular uh, person working in the rss or for, for that matter uh, any particular political party grassroots worker 
you look at the parliament now today we have uh, how many parliamentarians uh, in the house of the people uh, i think it's 545 plus na plus a few more so you look at the calculation i will find that more than 283 or so of them association for democratic reforms the website you go there uh, are tainted corrupt uh, uh, politicians who have engaged in murder arson riot and so on so the problem that i'm highlighting it is a social problem politics doesn't happen in vacuum politics and the institutions they always reflect the soul society the complex nature of society if you have hatred for a particular person in your family kind of person in your family for example you hate intellectualism in your family debate and discussion in your family you hate democracy in your family for example you will not be able to respect democracy wherever you are in your institution for example you are working here if you are not democratic by your ethos that is to solve the problem by debate and discussion and uh, by respecting the other person's views you of course will not be able to uh, somehow out of the sleight of hand and magic uh, do that somewhere else so whosoever is dictatorial uh, misogynistic in the family shall be the same wherever that person goes all right so the foundation of politics is in the in the family the first unit of politics as per aristotle and in the society uh, uh, Sudipta Kaviraj's book, uh, The Politics in India, the first page itself says that society is the mirror of a state. All right. So all the cleavages, all the problems, all the uh, you know complexities that we observe wherever we live, they manifest uh, in the state also. That is why you sometimes see uh, uh, people, uh, uh, parliamentarians, our representatives, uh, they go on to uh, say mindlessly whatever they want to say. For example, in the parliament, a person, uh, for example, Yogi Adityanath, the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, if you focus on his uh, past uh, record, you will find that this guy has a, a, a broad history in criminal activity and engaging consciously, despite being a parliamentarian, in, uh, in fomenting terror and, uh, and burning uh, communities and so on. So this is a liberal college, your college, you know, here the hate must be consigned to, to, to fire only uh, uh, as per our tradition. So that is our purpose without any uh, here, uh, 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 you know, deviation. Our job is to lay bare the complexity. Uh, and uh, so I was referring to the problem, uh, the, the uh, problem of Hindutva politics, the RSS, the, the murdering of Gandhi and, and the coming in power of the Janta Party after the emergency for one year and creation of the Bharatiya Janta Party in 1983. And uh, after that, uh, if you see the problem in Punjab and uh, Kashmir and, uh, and Assam started uh, flaring up the secessionist problem. And it was, of course, uh, those forces, nationalism and secessionism. You know, secessionism, you understand the word, no? secession. That is to, to separate, claiming of separation from somewhere. No, nationalism and secessionism, or regionalism. Nationalism, secessionism, regionalism. They are closely associated because they uh, uh, take a particular kind of interest in uh, claiming a particular kind of freedom for a particular kind of uh, national or regional or uh, whatever community. No, so so in the 1990s you see. Uh, Lal Krishna Adwani, uh, today uh, we, uh, we saw the Kashmir files, isn't it? And we saw the stories. I mean, I did not saw, see even the trailer because I'm not interested in, the, in, in all these things. But I do have a background in political science and I was subjected to the reading as I am subjected to you. So I know what was happening. So LK Adwani, today we blame the Kashmiris, the Muslims in Kashmir for atrocities committed on Muslim, uh, uh, Kashmiri Brahmins there, no? But let me tell you, and you could verify it, of course, uh, uh, totally free to verify the claim that I'm making. LK Advani was the one who engaged in the Rath Yatra in Lal Chowk, uh, Srinagar, the first person to do it and to create the animosity among the people in Kashmir that the Brahmins are different and the Muslims are different. And then what happened, you know, if political class goes on, no, you re we remember Jawaharlal Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi, when the partition happened, those guys put together, they were not good friends, let me tell you. During the partisan uh, 
time and when the constitution was being drafted they were not very good friends but of course uh, gandhi used to love jawaharlal nehru and so was the case with jawaharlal nehru great respect for him uh, uh, but these both guys in opposition to what is happening today when uh, the riot the partition happened uh, uh, mahatma gandhi was in uh, bengal uh, uh, touring and, and telling people that please uh, don't panic and and uh, we the indian state will take care of you jawaharlal nehru roaming in connaught place you will find in sunil khilnani and telling people that indian state is a secular state and irrespective of your caste creed religion language we shall be able to provide you security and we will provide you security today we observe here in under our nose you know uh, a few years ago we saw what happened in sahin bhag and hundreds of people were killed of both communities and thrown away Uh, into the drains and so on no uh, heart wrenching story no not behaving a liberal polity and an intelligence here like you guys studying thinking and uh, totally uh, you know curious and and at at, at the uh, uh, some somewhere from uh, uh, you see this uh, a brute news coming up that uh, a bulldozer is uh, uh, running and breaking the house and so on no so what does it do is it helpful for the liberal project uh or is it harmful uh will it break our social fabric will it, will it create animosity among the people themselves and above all the question par excellence will it create uh, a dissension among the patriots fighting in the army for example on the border uh no for example you are from a particular religion and i'm from a particular religion that the dissensus uh so bhimrao ramji ambedkar referring to liberalism and the caste in our politics uh, says that uh, caste is bad of course because of the dehumanization and indignification that it does but other than that the greatest evil of the caste system is that it saps us of any energy for patriotic feeling no because uh, you are then uh, from your particular caste or religion or region you have no call and that is that that was the problem why we for example were ruled by foreigners for many years no our vain glory our false pride or false consciousness our continued sticking to the glory of the long gone no uh, past and which is completely useless in the 21st century to make sense of what is important and what is not we know that this is a technological age uh, wherein the propaganda the genocide call for geno genocide and xenophobia spreads very fast and it requires that we we become more careful about it and uh, why i am teaching you all this because uh, we are doing indian politics okay uh, so lk advani uh, could be you could research and you could find his role for example uh, uh, in the rath yatra and he was prosecuted by the supreme court of india by, uh, uh, with the uh, murli manohar joshi for demolishing the babri masjid in ayodhya and he is under uh, 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 prosecution even now and can be charged any time so these politicians coming up fomenting hatred in the indian society and destroying our social liberal social fabric see when we started to work on this system liberal democratic system uh, it doesn't mean that when i yesterday suggested that we got the liberal parliamentary uh, system from the our british colonial experience but that was not exactly correct we were not allowed to uh, for example during the morley monte morley mento reforms the for the first time uh, we could uh, go to the provincial assembly and the central legislative assembly okay but even then because the governor general of india has the power to veto so you could not legislate you could not pass a budget or whatever with parliament to montek uh, chams for reforms of 1919 uh, self governance or the keyword and 1935 the federal system but even then the governor general has the power to veto not only the legislative assembly but the central legislative assembly and he along with the secretary of the state is working uh, as per the suggestion from the british crown so we got the experience and in 1937 uh, or 36 uh, for the first time british allowed election and uh, the congress formed government in few provinces uh, but that that government was dissolved because of the starting of the world war 2 uh, uh, so uh, we had little bit of experience 
in representative democracy, parliamentary democracy, but it does not mean that we were uh, treated as equals uh, uh, with the colonizer. We were subjected to brutal inequality, brutal uh, exclusivism and racism, isn't it? You read Gandhi, uh, of course, Gandhi is more, uh, more infuriated by what Britishers did to Indians. Uh, uh, and uh, he tells us, uh, for example, a different story of who we are and how we should move ahead, uh, which is a little different from either the Marxist interpretation or the liberal interpretation. That is why in our syllabus, we have three approaches, uh, Marxist, liberal, and Gandhian one, okay? So L.K. Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi, and then uh, uh, coming in power for the first time in 2001 or 2000 of uh, uh, this, uh, uh, what is the name, Atal Bihari Bajpayee, Atal Bihari Bajpayee government. And uh, 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 of course, we can always be very good and uh, fine with whosoever, you know. So, uh, but the evil in politics is dangerous. Why? Because politics refers not to the individual, to the public, to the collective. It affects the, for example, if personally I'm evil or you are evil or anybody is evil, it affects your own soul, isn't it? it has nothing to do with nobody. But if in politics at the public forum, you go on to uh, spread hatred and so on, it refers directly to the collective well-being of the people and some, somebody engages in hate speech, for example, against another community, instantly hundreds of people getting killed. One word from your mouth at the, at the you know, with, with speaker and somebody gets killed, no? Not benign activity. So, of course, uh, uh, you could be uh, just thinking about it. And recent, for example, again, uh, between 2000, uh, five, it was four, I think, Manmohan Singh and 2014. Uh, this thing for the first time in Indian politics, we see a uh, uh, nationalist Hindutva group, ultra conservative party ruling for two terms. That is for the first time since we became independent. And what will be the consequences, uh, uh, political, social, and economic consequences of having a conservative party always harking back to the past, not caring about the future? not caring about the young people and their education. Of course, we have a lot of achievements to attribute to a particular party, but our country, whatever it is today, it is not because of Prime Minister Modi, for example, it is because of Jawaharlal Nehru, Dal Bahadur Shastri, Indira Gandhi, no? And uh, Rajiv Gandhi, P.B. Narsimha Rao, S.D. Deo Gowda, Atal Bihari Bajpayee, and Prime Minister uh, Manmohan Singh, then, uh, and then Prime Minister Modi, uh, just a supplementary uh, uh, in that whole story. He is not the creator of the destiny or whatever he claims to be, isn't it? It's a cumulative history uh, being created. For, so for example, when you attribute all the glory and all the prize to the Prime Minister, uh, what do you do? You do injustice to your ancestors who worked hard on the ground, toiled with the land, and they also worked to create the uh, the country as it is, and not Prime Minister Modi uh, 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 alone. So, uh, Hindutva politics in crux, summarizing, is uh, uh, antithetical uh, at many instances, many places, to the liberal values. Uh, and liberal values, as per the constitution, no need to be, you know, inventing concepts. Liberal here refers to equal equality before the law, equal protection by the law, right to freedom, right to life, and freedom from exploitation, freedom from slavery, freedom to express and profess religion, and freedom to protect our language, culture, and whatever we hold dear to ourselves, isn't it? So that is why yesterday, glorifying our constitution, exclaiming the virtue, unparalleled, uh, unique virtue of our constitution, I told you that our constitution is a good mixture of uh, individual, you know, individual and group rights uh, protects both of them. So you could be thinking about it and we'll be going more slowly, all of you. No need to be overwhelmed, okay? You read it slowly only. Takes as long as it takes. They say in the movies, no? You, you read it, I'll be interpreting it. But if you read the book and I lecture, much better. All right? So I think that's all from my, uh, from my side. Of course, uh, let me tell you what I shall be doing in the future so that uh, you uh, are aware of it. Uh, 
so uh, in the first section under the nine lectures we have uh, approaches to study the nature and characteristics of indian state uh, wherein we apply the marxist theory the liberal theory and the gandhian theory to understand the same that is the nature and the characteristics so we i gave two introductions two lectures introductory lectures then i started with liberalism now i'll be going to marxism after that okay and then i'll be going to gandhian approach all right so you you see quite slow i am moving isn't it sorry yeah tuesday is the final day by tuesday you be well read in sunil khilani and it is a liberal approach when i tell you something you take it okay and then you read it and then you come back and critique uh, provide whatever feedback you want to provide all right so that's all from my side if you have any question or anything uh, dear students uh, you could uh, just uh, ask the question all right any question was it meaningful uh, the lecture could you could understand what i was trying to communicate so yesterday i was thinking i would do something to make the lecture more better so that you can understand okay so that's all uh, thank you